Welcome to the History of North America. I'm Mark Vinette. Let's catch up and rejoin French soldier, navigator, geographer, explorer, and adventurer Samuel de Champlain and the fledgling North American colony of New France. Samuel Champlain, the issue of the marriage of Antoine Champlain and Marguerite Leroy, was born in the year 1570 at Brouage, a small village in the province of Saint-Onge, France, in the year 1567. His parents belonged to the Catholic religion. Naturalist, mariner, geographer, such was Samuel Champlain, and to a degree remarkable for the age in which he lived, and his numerous writings reveal him to us as a keen and sagacious observer, a man of science and a skillful and intrepid mariner. Champlain was a navigator by instinct, and in his writings he gave to nautical science the first place. Quote, of all the most useful and excellent arts, he writes, that of navigation has always seemed to me to occupy the first place. For the more hazardous it is, the greater the perils and losses by which it is attended, so much the more is it esteemed and exalted above all others, being wholly unsuited to the timid and irresolute. By this art we obtain a knowledge of different countries, regions, and realms. By it we attract and bring to our own land all kinds of riches. By it, the idolatry of paganism is overthrown, and Christianity proclaimed throughout all the regions of the earth. This is the art which won my love in my early years, and induced me to expose myself almost all my life to the impetuous waves of the ocean, and led me to explore the coasts of a portion of America, especially those of New France, where I have always desired to see the lily flourish, together with the only religion, Catholic, Apostolic, and Roman." As a cosmographer, Champlain added yet another laurel to his crown, for he excelled all his predecessors, both by the ample volume of his descriptions and by the logical arrangement of the geographical data which he supplied. The impetus which he gave to cartographical science can scarcely be overestimated. Before becoming the founder of colonies, Champlain entered the French army, where he devoted himself to the religion of his ancestors. This was the first important step in his long and eventful career. A martial life, however, does not appear to have held out the same inducements as that of a mariner. An opportunity was presented which enabled him to gratify his tastes when the Spanish government sent out an armada to encounter the English in the Gulf of Mexico. Champlain was given the command of a ship in this expedition, but his experience during the war served rather as an occasion to develop his genius as a mariner and cosmographer than to add to his renown as a warrior. God directed the steps of Champlain towards the shores of the future New France. If the mother country had not completely forgotten this land discovered by one of her greatest captains, she had at least neglected it. The honor of bringing the king's attention to this vast country, which was French by the right of discovery, was reserved for the modest son of Brouage. While Pierre Dugois, Sieur de Mont, was wasting his years and expending large sums of money in his fruitless efforts to colonize the island of St. Croix and Port-Royal, Champlain's voyage to Acadia and his discovery of the New England coast were practically useful, and in consequence Champlain endeavored to assure de Mont that his own efforts would be more advantageously directed to the shores of the St. Lawrence, for here it was obvious that the development of the country must commence. Champlain's next step was to found Quebec. With this act began colonial history, the foundation of a Canadian people. Quebec was founded, but nothing more was accomplished at the moment owing to the lack of means. The trials of Champlain now commenced. Day by day he had to contend against his own countrymen. The attractions of fur trading were too great for the merchants to induce them to settle down and develop the country around them, and they were unwilling to fulfill their promises or to act in accordance with the terms of their patents. During the next twenty years, Champlain crossed the ocean eighteen times. Each voyage was made in the interest of the colony, and he sought by every means in his power, by prayers and petitions, to obtain the control of the commerce of the country so as to make it beneficial to all. In spite of his extraordinary exertions and the force of his will, he foresaw the fatal issue of his labors. The settlers were few in number, bread and provisions were scarce, and the condition of the infant colony was truly deplorable. At this distressing period, a British fleet arrived in the harbor of Quebec. What was to be done? The rude fortress of Saint-Louis could not withstand the assault of an armed fleet, even if it were well defended. But Champlain had no ammunition, and he therefore adopted the only course open to him of capitulating and handing over the keys of the fort to the commander, Kirk. Champlain then left Quebec and returned to France. Bitter was this journey to him, for it was like passing into exile to see the familiar heights of Quebec fade into the distance, the city of his foundation, and the country of his adoption. We have an idea of his sorrow during the three years that England maintained supremacy in Canada, for he says that the days were as long as months. 
During his enforced sojourn in France, Champlain exerted all his energies to revive interest in the abandoned colony. His plan was to recover the country by all means. Finally, success crowned his efforts, and the Treaty of Saint-Germain-en-Laye gave back to France the young settlement. Champlain recrossed the sea and planted the lily banner of France upon the heights of Cape Diamond. In the year 1635, Champlain was taken ill and died on Christmas Day after having devoted forty years of his life to the promotion of the religion and commercial interests of the land of his ancestors, but he bequeathed to the Canadian people the priceless heritage of Quebec and the memory of a pure and honest heart. Before Champlain's death, however, Quebec had commenced to develop. On the Beauport coast might be seen the residences of many of the settlers who arrived from the province of Perche in 1634. On the shores of the river Lairet, the Jesuits had built a convent, where the young Indians received instruction, and agriculture had received some attention. Robert Giffard had established a colony at Beauport, which formed the nucleus of a population in this section of the country. Near Fort Saint-Louis, the steeple of Notre-Dame de la Recouvrance gave witness that Champlain had fulfilled his promise to build a church at Quebec if the country was restored to her ancient masters. The colony was now entering upon an era of prosperity, and that harmony and happiness which Champlain had longed for in his life, and which occupied his thoughts even in death, were destined to be realized. Were there a who's who in history, its chronicle of Champlain's life and deeds would run as follows. Champlain, Samuel D., explorer, geographer, and colonizer. Born in 1567 at Bourrage, a village on the Bay of Biscay. Belonged by parentage to the lesser gentry of Saint-Onge. In boyhood, became imbued with the love of the sea, but also served as a soldier in the wars of the League. Though an enthusiastic Catholic, was loyal to Henry of Navarre. On the Peace of Vervins, 1598, returned to the sea, visiting the Spanish West Indies and Mexico. Between 1601 and 1603, wrote his first book, The Bref Discours. In 1603, made his first voyage to the St. Lawrence, which he ascended as far as the Lachine Rapids. From 1604 to 1607, was actively engaged in the attempt of de Mont to establish a French colony in Acadia, at the same time exploring the seaboard from Cape Breton to Martha's Vineyard. Returned to the St. Lawrence in 1608 and founded Quebec. In 1609, discovered Lake Champlain, and fought his first battle with the Iroquois. In 1613, ascended the Ottawa to a point above Lac Coulange. In 1615, reached Georgian Bay, and was induced to accompany the Hurons, with their allies, on an unsuccessful expedition into the country of the Iroquois. From 1617 to 1629, occupied chiefly in efforts to strengthen the colony at Quebec and promote trade on the lower St. Lawrence. Taken captive to London by Kirk in 1629 upon the surrender of Quebec, but after its recession to France, returned, 1633, and remained in Canada until his death on Christmas Day, 1635. Published several important narratives describing his explorations and adventures. An intrepid pioneer and the revered founder of New France. I'm Mark Vinette, and I hope you're enjoying the ride. 